Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Steve Bissonette, Vice President of Marketing for Strategic Systems, and it's my pleasure to introduce you uh, today to uh, today's presenters. Um, so first, we've got uh, Kevin Lollick. He's the Regional uh, Project Manager for Operating Systems and Software Platforms at Zebra Technologies. He has more than 25 years of experience designing and developing large-scale mobile computing and data collection systems, and we've known Kevin and worked with him for a long time. Uh, he's very highly respected in our industry and uh, has uh, been uh, been on the leading edge of this OS migration trend here. So we're really lucky to have him here today. And uh, we also have Joe Savino, who's Vice President of Sales and Service at Strategic Systems. Um, he has more than a decade of industry experience and offers a unique perspective, um, having performed key roles at both data collection manufacturers and their channel partners. Um, so we've got Kevin and Joe here today. And before I hand it off to Kevin, I just wanted to let you know that this will be a recorded um, webinar, and we'll have the recorded version available on our website following the presentation available uh, for you to share um, as as you like. And also, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, just please message them to me at the bottom right of your uh, control panel on the meeting, and uh, we'll address them during a Q&A at the end of the session. And uh, for anyone that's just joining us, it looks like we had a couple more people just pop on. Welcome to the webinar, Modernizing Your Warehouse with Android. And with that, I'll hand it off to Kevin. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve. And, and all, I appreciate your, uh, your time and attention on the webinar today. I know this is a, a, a very pertinent topic these days as far as what's happening within the, uh, the warehouse environment, especially when it comes to uh, mobile data collection environments. So, uh, so with that, uh, I kind of want to kind of want to get started here is with a little uh, uh, a little slide here that'll kind of set the direction for the, for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. And, and really, our goal here is to not necessarily um, you know tell you everything that you need to know about this warehouse migration, but uh, more so. Uh, give you all a perspective of what and why things are changing when it comes to rugged mobile computing platforms in a warehouse environment. Uh, to talk a little bit about you know, some of the facts around rugged mobile, um, why a new direction that we have to take is really not the same as a direction that we've uh, been comfortable with for the last several years with Windows Mobile and Windows CE. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the security concerns around the environments that we're uh, installing in these days and what Zebra does to address those uh, concerns around security and maintenance. And, and more so, uh, the best part I like about giving these presentations is, is I like to use data that's not just Zebra data. Uh, I, you know, as, as Steve mentioned, I've been doing this for uh, 25 plus years, and the thing that I like to do is support uh, the discussion with fact, uh, with industry background and knowledge. And a lot of these slides that I'll present, um, and when you have uh, access to the recording afterward, there will be uh, links that you can go and explore and, and more so use this as dialogue when you're having a uh, discussion with your management or, or your program people when it comes to making a, a directional decision to, to move platforms going forward. So uh, just to give a little perspective as far as what happened and, and what's going on with rugged, rugged mobile computing these days, um, there we go, uh, is, is if you don't know already uh, that uh, Microsoft has already uh, announced their uh, discontinued support of our existing mobile computing platforms that we typically see in warehouse environments. Those being primarily built around Windows Embedded Handheld or Windows CE and so on. Uh, they, Microsoft has already retired mainstream support of these operating systems. Uh, and you'll see this column here on the, the right-hand side where it says, and the extended support is retired. And basically what this means is that Microsoft is not going to focus on providing uh, updates, fixes, and things like that, even to the OEMs that utilize these platforms going forward. So uh, you know, the, the reason that's important is because um, enterprises, especially those that have any um, regulatory compliance requirements for maintaining a secure environment or maintaining a uh, 
a, a system of immutable and supportable record, uh, this is becoming critical. Um, a prime example of that would be uh, military uh, type applications where there has to be within every element of a supported system, a chain of custodial support. Uh, knowing that this chain of su uh, custodial support is going to be broken has caused the military to be able to, to look at different avenues and operating systems going forward. So that's just an example. Uh, you know, the, this, this, this path is coming to an end. The other aspect um, that's driving a, you know, an influence in this change in direction is uh, the e-commerce industry. Every single one of us, um, you know, that's on the phone or that's going to be listening to this in, in a future recording has really derived a new set of expectations of how goods are be to, uh, how goods are to be delivered. You know, we, we almost have this, this aspect that, you know, two days is, is good enough in some cases, you know, ideally it would be, you know, it would be next day delivery, but, but this, this change in e-commerce is driving enhanced needs and requirements for more employees to be, uh, to, you know, to be in place in order to be able to support these systems, uh, to support this expectation. Doing that, having more employees means equipping them with more technology and equipping them with more technology means we have to give them something that is uh, more pertinent to the way that they experience technology in their outside of work environment. Uh, and again, just some, some statistics here that, um, you know, demand for employees in logistics is going to exceed the supply by a ratio of six to one in the next few years. In India, they project being, you know, having to need 17 million dollars, 17 million additional workers by 2022. And even in the UK, 1.2 million additional workers needed by 2022 as well. Uh, you know, this is because changes in e-commerce are driving the way that we have to perform in logistics and Part of logistics is the warehouse component anyway. So, you know, it's very important that we have to think about that. The The reason I mentioned that little bit about, you know, we have to give people uh, devices and technology and the way that they expect technology to behave is really primarily driven around the way that an end user's experience with technology is driven today. You know, every single one of us has a smartphone. Um, it, Every single one of us has a has an experience with mobile technology that's driven around, you know, touching an icon or touching a screen or using an on-screen keyboard and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this this primarily, if we look at if we look at the global space, if we look globally, this is primarily driven around two operating systems, that being Android and iOS. Um, you know, the good thing is, is that this has driven a common set of experiences of, of the way people expect technology to behave more so if we look at this from a global perspective, the majority of the users that are out there are basing their experiences on Android, whereas, you know, the, the less, uh, lesser so, um, uh, percentage is based on iOS. In North America, we typically see, you know, probably about a 50-50 ratio, half the users on iOS, half the users on Android. However, the commonality in how you use those operating systems is the same. You touch an icon, you start an app, you use an on-screen keyboard, you pinch and zoom and so on. And that type of expectation is, is, is something that does not have to be retrained when I give a user a new uh, a new technology or a new device. So knowing that there's going to be a requirement for a growing workforce, knowing that we need to minimize the impact of enabling with them, to, with, them with technology, you know, gives us a couple of choices here um, beyond Windows, which we know is, is going away. Uh, for those of you that may have not you know, gotten the, the message, you know, that the, there was hope in the industry. And especially when we look at um, warehouse and logistic operations, you know, the prime, uh, the prime hope was, you know, that it's going to be the next generation of Windows, uh, the next generation of Microsoft Mobile, uh, which is, you know, which was a great expectation because we've, we've survived so long, you know, I would say probably the last, 
uh, 12 to 13 years on Windows Mobile and Windows CE that we just had an expectation that the next version will allow us to continue to move our applications forward. Uh, but as of, uh, as of October of 2017, Microsoft put an end to that. Uh, they are not going to develop any more uh, mobile operating system platforms um, you know, in in the like a Windows Phone environment and so on. Uh, in fact, if you look at what Microsoft has been doing, their strategy has been one to provide a Microsoft experience, regardless of the underlying platform that you're running a Microsoft application on. Uh, for example, I think one of the most intelligent things that they ever did was was put. Uh, this was several years ago. They put Microsoft Office on an iPad and and licensed it and and saw explosive growth and then since then they took that microsoft office platform and moved it to android uh, now they're running microsoft business dynamics on android now they're running uh word on android now they're running um you know intune is supporting android platforms so so really their their play is to you know, to to provide a Microsoft centric experience of an application, regardless of the underlying device say, that they're running on. Um, so so Windows 10 mobile is no longer the focus. So it's really forcing the industry to 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 make a change in in the way that they execute uh, their platforms going forward. Uh, getting back to the the user experience of applications, you know, we know. Uh, based on a, a study that was done a while back from from BDC, is that users are just not happy with the applications that they use anymore. So, you know, more workers using applications, we have to make sure that we minimize their downtime, maximize their productivity. Let's give them something uh, that they can easily use. And knowing that the applications that they're using these days aren't really cutting it. And, and for me as a developer looking at this, if I saw that only 41% of my users are satisfied or extremely satisfied with my application, I would be sorely disappointed in my efforts in delivering something that makes them more productive. Uh, add on to that, you know, users don't like the applications, it's costing them more to maintain and so on. We need to uh, come up with ways in order to be able to, to, to deliver on uh, applications that, that keep our businesses running and keep the workers productive and do so in a way that minimizes their environment. So um, a couple years back, um, you know, we, we kind of saw this direction coming from Microsoft as far as what it is that they were going to do with Windows Phone 7 and Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 mobile uh, and, and so on. And we, we, we listened hard to what it was that they were going to do with those architectures. Um, you know, at that time as well, we made a uh, we made a bet. Um, we made a risky bet at that at that time uh, that we had to go with an open operating system platform that allowed us to deliver a lot of value add, yet um, mitigate the you know some of the risks that we saw coming from uh, from a, a Microsoft centric environment. Uh, we you know, we adopted Android as that operating system. And the reason being is Android uh, is uh, and was at the time the only open source platform that was available for vendors to use and create and contribute back. So, you know, we, we, we adopted that and we moved with conviction. Early on, Android wasn't secure. We provided capabilities in order to be able to make it secure. We made it manageable. Early on, it wasn't manageable. We worked with the uh, uh, the uh, EMMs, the Enterprise Mobility Management Platforms, like the Sodi Air Watches and so on, in order to be able to, to make it manable, manageable and provided extensions that they had access to to make it, uh, you know, to make it usable in the way that, that our, our legacy platforms were still were, were managed. Uh, we added tools and utilities, enterprise browser. Uh, we helped ease the transition in adopting frameworks that eased application development migration from CE or .NET application frameworks into 
Android frameworks. Um, you know, we added lifecycle management. We'll talk about that here in a little bit and why that's important. Uh, we added utilities and so on. And this has been a a, a long-term progression. This is not something that we did because of a knee-jerk reaction because Microsoft pulled out of the mobile space. It is a strategic move that we made knowing a direction that the market was going to take. And our partners like strategic uh, really picked up on that and, and, and run along with it. The reason a, a, a tight relationship, um, a partnership more than anything is, is important is because it allows us to work very closely uh, and, and help influence some of the designs that are going into uh, uh, an operating system going forward. Uh, for example, if you've followed Android uh, for the long haul as much as I have, you you know that initially it was very consumer centric. It was very open, very friendly, very easy to develop for, easy to get into from a developer standpoint. However, uh, ease of access means you know potential for uh, risk. Uh, but what we've done in these partnerships is influenced the the way that these risks are mitigated and provided mechanisms to lock down devices and and really contributed that back into the community to make the the later variants of Android much more secure. Um, uh, just an example of some of the more recent things that that we have helped influence is the concept of device owner versus device administrator. Uh, a device owner in the early days of Android meant the person using the device. The person that used the device could control what got installed, what accessed, and so on. Now, the new concept of a device owner that we've influenced is the enterprise now owns the device that, or I should say that a device is. It could be one device, it could be 10,000 devices, but the enterprise is the device owner. The enterprise can now determine what gets installed, what gets, you know, what gets run, uh, what permissions are granted and so on. So that 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 concept of a device owner was was heavily influenced by us. Again, just an example, and you'll see more things coming out in market that that this tight partnership has really led to a strong enterprise position uh, with with Android overall. So. Um, like I said, this has been a long-term progression. This is something that we've been working on for the, for the last seven years, initially with a, a tablet device and evolving into a, a suite of device uh, platforms, I guess, device realizations based on a common underlying hardware and software architecture, and that being, you know, that being primarily built around Android. I think, you know, we know that there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all gadget, um, thereby we design uh, gadgets, mobile technology uh, devices that are specific to the use cases. We know that a, a, a person picking stock within a warehouse is not necessarily going to want to use a tablet, where a tablet might be good for a warehouse supervisor, it might be good in casual use cases to be mounted on a forklift. So, so having the, the, this variety of devices is, is able to resolve a lot of the, the deployment uh, capabilities within warehouse and logistic environments. Uh, the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with this long-term strategy is that uh, there's a software architecture that goes in behind backing us up and it goes beyond the operating system. And, and think about it, you know, we've got, we collectively, all of us on the phone here, we have the opportunity now in order to be able to do more with the devices that we're putting in the hands of our users. Uh, for example, and I'll talk about this here in a little bit, for example, we can uh, add capability to a mobile device that in a sense turns it into the equivalent of a walkie-talkie. Uh, we've got uh, features in utility uh, here, you'll see this icon here called Workforce Connect. Uh, there's a, a function within there called PTT Pro, 
which, you know, in a sense, think of it like enabling these devices to work like the old Nextel radios did. You know, that's pretty cool stuff. And we can do that in a way that it doesn't impact their worker productivity. It keeps them in application, but now allows them new methods of communications to others. A warehouse supervisor, um, a, a stock manager, a, a uh, you know, uh, an order picker and so on. So so it gives me now more flexibility to be able to do more with these devices. So utility is very important. And this has been an evolution uh, over time. It's not something that, you know, if you think about when Microsoft did their announcement uh, around here, October, 2018, um, you know, it's it's not something that, that that we've all of a sudden developed all these utility around. It's something that has grown over the years and, and we've got a lot of uh, good forward uh, motion and strength within our partners like Strategic in order to be able to, to execute on these platforms. And we're seeing, you know, good market adoption, uh, or I should say excellent market adoption, you know, even in a few short years, just looking at field mobility between 2014 and 2016. More than half of the, the deployments that we've put out there have been based on an all-touch uh, form factor. Uh, and, and we know that in warehouse keys are important and, and you know, primarily in order to be able to support the, the legacy users and, and even in certain use cases, freezer environments with gloves and so on, that that's important. And we are, uh, and we do have those devices that, that have key-based implementations that support Android. So, so the market's moving, uh, things are progressing forward. You know, it, it, it seems very disruptive, but at the, at the, uh, on the other hand, in a long-term view, it's very positive motion because now it's going to give me an opportunity in order to be able to take a lot of what I've been doing and accelerate the motion in order to be able to meet the expectations of what's coming down the road, as I you know, kind of explained a little bit further before. So that being said, um, it's a, a little bit of background as far as the direction that the market's taking. And, and when I talk about the market, it's not just Zebra. It's, you know, Zebra and, and everybody else that makes rugged mobile computing platform. This is the direction that the industry is taking. Where the differentiation comes into play is innovation around these platforms. And, you know, kind of put your shoes in, put yourself in the shoes of a, uh, of a manufacturer. You know, we as Zebra and collectively within the industry, we have to think about the way that consumerization is influencing the way we we previously implemented hardware. You know, now fancy touchscreen, touch-centric, uh, and so on. But uh, that's all well and good from a hardware perspective. But what we can't compromise on is everything that we've done over the last 20, 30 years of delivering mobile platforms to you. And those platforms are really built on the premise of maximizing the life cycle and minimizing any impact a change in that life cycle means to you. Uh, and let me just call out a couple ones. Uh, consumer platforms don't think about uh, durability, impact, wear, susceptibility. Um, for example, uh, uh, if anybody anybody who's an iOS user and left their phone in a car or tried to use their phone on a hot day has probably seen the yellow triangle. Um, that's something that we think about. We think about the entire operating temperature range of, of how these devices are used on, on, a, on a router in a warehouse in a 104 degree day in Houston uh, where a consumer variant of a device wouldn't work. We think about things like uh, managing batteries. We know that these devices are used for multiple shifts. We know that they're going to need replaceable batteries. Consumer devices don't account for that. We know that more than one user is going to be using a device. We account for that in the design. So when we, when we look at mobile computing platforms that we deploy in our environments, think carefully or consider carefully, I should say, you know, the, the, you know, the, the different environmental impacts and how these devices are going to be used and will a consumer device fit the bill or am I going to compromise the integrity of the work that I do um, by putting a consumer device out there knowing that it won't last over the temperature cycle or it won't last an entire shift or it won't be able to support multiple users and so on. So, you know, very definitely uh, a consideration. 
that's something that we think about. Um, and again, just some uh, some food for thought on, on people that have deployed uh, consumer devices in a in an industrial or rugged environment sees uh, have you know they've kind of felt the pain in that, and are going back towards more purpose built devices for their uh, for their enterprise applications. The good news is is we know that there's not like I said earlier there's not the one size fits all gadget. There are uh, devices specifically suited for high velocity PIC applications that need both hands free. A wearable computer, the WT6000 based on Android paired with a ring scanner uh, or a corded scanner. Our traditional data collection devices for workers in motion, you know, either the gun style or the brick style devices, or even new form factors like the TC8000. Think of it as a, a front shooting uh, a front shooting scanning device, which allows you to have visibility of the screen, scan a barcode without having to tip your wrist each time you wanted to verify what's being scanned or what's being shown on the screen. And all the way to vehicle mount devices like the VC80. Uh, again, a common ecosystem in delivering applications, meaning yeah, I develop for Android and I, and I can iterate on any of these platforms and it gives me, from an IT administration standpoint, a common platform that I have to support for my end users. And that's huge. Uh, you know, when we think about what it takes in order to be able to get these devices in, our, in the hands of our users in the first place. It's really a, an ecosystem that's built on value, right? We, we, we're, we're all about the devices. We know we make an investment in technology. However, how can I lever these devices to do more? How can I take a, an EDA-centric device, you know, something that might be used in a router county application like a TC70, and turn it into something that is capable of being used in a high-velocity scan application where I'm just scan, 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 scan. I can add a trigger handle to it. Okay, and now how can I take these devices and add additional utility and capability to it to enhance my worker productivity, to make it easier for them to type on, uh, use enterprise keyboard, to make it easier for them to scan instead of having to find a little scan button on the side of the device. Why not turn the whole screen into a scan button so when I tap the screen, it turns out a scanner. These are things that we add as part of our ecosystem to make the devices easier to use. And then on top of that, lever that underlying platform to do more with it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, things like Workforce Connect to enable uh, communications. Um, you know, another another function of Workforce Connect would be to turn it into an extension of an IP-based phone system. So there, you know, there's lots of things that we can do with the platform, and it's all about increasing the value and increasing the productivity in the hands of the workers that we uh, that we deploy these in. Um, I am not going to go through this slide in a whole lot of detail. You can thank me later because it is a bit of an eye chart. But you know, this this talks uh, and you know, view it uh, uh, view it separately. But think of this as a doggy bag slide. You can take it away and enjoy it later. But you know, when we think about the value and the, the capabilities that we bring to the platform, uh, and again, I'll pick on stage now. Uh, stage now is a is a capability that we have that allows for easy device deployment similar to what we had with our legacy devices um, in, in a rapid deployment client. Scan a barcode, get it on the network, point it to an MDM server, download applications, and so on. We've built that same application capability. Uh, and it's great for anybody who, uh, who has to administer and deploy these devices. It is free, uh, available as part of a, a Zebra deployment. And you know it's it really cuts down on on administering and deploying these devices and overall reduces the total cost of ownership. So again, I'm not going to go through the slide in in any detail. This would be years for review at a later time. And any questions, you know, by all means, folks over strategic can uh, can take a deep dive on any any of these these features and capabilities. The important part is is it's all about driving value and increasing productivity. Uh, as an example, uh, we took a, a traditional terminal emulation green screen application that ran on our brick style terminals or gun style terminals, the 9190, and we replaced that device with a new device, the TC8000. Uh, again, keep in mind it's Android, it's touchscreen and so on, but at the end of the day, it's still running terminal emulation. Um, we were able to measure 
inherent gains in productivity because number one, we had to eliminate, we had an opportunity to eliminate a lot of a lot of training time for the end users because it was a familiar interface. Uh, it resulted in a lot lower error rates because we were able to modify the keyboard in such a way that show the user the pertinent keys at a given point in the workflow itself. And what really surprised me was the typing speeds increased. But you think about that. Think about the way that you use your device today. It's a QWERTY touchscreen keyboard. The devices that we typically have in the hands of our users in the old way is a, a, a hard button key based interface that does not have an intuitive layout. It's an ABCD EFG type layout. It's not a QWERTY layout. So, so you know, after I wrap my head around this for a little bit, even thinking about my kids at the dinner table who are texting on a phone and a non-indexable keyboard while they're sitting across the table having a conversation. It makes sense. They're more accurate, they're faster, and so on. And, and there's realized measured gains in productivity. And that's that's important uh, when we're trying to capture a return on the investment that we make. So um, the other aspect that we have to think about is, uh, is one around security. Uh, in, in every conversation, or I should say just about every conversation they get involved in, uh, there are still factions out there that, that, that feel that Android has inherent risks in security. Um, and it was, it was true early on, as I explained early on, you know, there, it, it was open, it was, it was built, it was, you know, easy to access and so on. Now it's, uh, it's a different world, but uh, in that different world, we have to think about things like um, uh, like the mobile device in and of itself. Uh, the, the whole aspect around security has changed drastically over the last three years. Uh, mobile, more mobile devices that are out there and so on. Um, in fact, the Department of Homeland Security, and I love, I love this slide, and I love more so the reference at the bottom of the slide here. So... So for those of you that have a, a chance uh, and enjoy this type of stuff around security, the uh, Department of Homeland Security published a report on mobile devices um, back in 2017. And basically they, they said, you know, if you're going to de deploy a mobile device in your environment, you need to consider these facts, okay? And they, they, they basically stripped down a mobile device to uh, 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 what's considered a, an attack surface or a surface, right? So you've got the technology that the mobile device is built on itself. You got the mobile applications that run on the device. You got the enterprise where the device is used in, the networks that the device attaches to and the physical systems on a device itself. So uh, in, in within each one of these surfaces, they looked at the potential ways of, you know, uh, of, of infecting or attacking that surface. So from a mobile application standpoint, they looked at malicious uh, uh, malicious practices that some applications might have had or, or vulnerabilities and exploits so that applications might introduce in the environment. Um, and it was, it's like I said, for me, it was a fascinating read, 150-ish pages of, uh, you know, I thought it was very well-written material. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, to cut to the cliff notes and the summary pages at the end of it, uh, they, they came to the conclusion that at the end of the day, no mobile device is really secure. If you want to look at securing a mobile device, really, you should follow a couple of best practices. Number one, the most important defense against mobile device security threats is to ensure the devices are patched against publicly known vulnerabilities, right? So even, um, even in this new world that we have, we, we have to start adopting a mindset that patches are going to become uh, part of the game. It's going to be a fact of life. Uh, we were blessed, uh, you know, depending on your perspective, we were blessed or, or, or uh, oh, what's the word I want? Um, anyway, uh, we, we were either blessed or not when it came to device security, you know, blessed through security by obscurity, but that doesn't 
it doesn't hold water anymore. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So a patch strategy uh, has to be in place. Number two, when you're when you're looking at procuring devices, seek a commitment from the vendor that security devices or security updates are going to be provided in a timely manner. And we address that through Lifeguard. I'll tell you about that in just a sec. So you've got our commitment uh, that we will provide patches you know, on a timely basis. And we will do so for the entire life cycle of the product. Because number three comes into play. When a device is no longer supported with updates, you, enterprises should decommission those devices. Um, you know, when you look at the consumer devices that are out there in market today, typically they have a 36 month life cycle and then security and OS patches are cut off. You can't afford to make investments in technology that's only gonna last 36 months, especially when you're typically buying, you know, at month 18 or month 24 after a device has been introduced, you know, that it, in a sense, it'll give you a 12 month runway of, of a viable product. So, you know, these are things that, that our programs help to support and help to uh, to mitigate carrying forward. And, and you might think, well, that's all well and good to, to have updates. But if you look at the vulnerabilities that have been introduced most recently, they've gone beyond the operating system. They, they, they are vulnerabilities launched against the physical interfaces and capabilities of the device. Uh, WannaCry, a ransomware attack because users went to places they shouldn't go. Blueborn uh, and Crack were physical attacks against the, either the Bluetooth radio or the Bluetooth stack or the Wi-Fi stack to, you know, to introduce vulnerabilities within that environment. Uh, pretty scary. Uh, however, at the end of the day, it is up to the operating system vendor to be able to provide patches for those. Um, you know, Blueborn, you might not get a patch for Blueborn on a Windows Mobile or Windows CE device because the stack, um, you know, the stack capability uh, isn't supported by the operating system vendors anymore. Um, WannaCry uh, is, is one of those vulnerabilities that, you know, you have to prevent users from going to places that they shouldn't go. And we've got those capabilities built in and so on. Spectre and Meltdown, uh, any device, uh, Intel-based uh, processor is susceptible to these uh, to these vulnerabilities. In fact, any device, be it Android or iOS, uh, Windows 10 on a on a HP laptop, you know, they were they were all vulnerable to these. And odds are, all the devices that you use are patched against these, uh, with the exception of of some of these legacy ones. So keep that in mind. You know, a patch strategy is going to be necessary going forward. And that's where LifeGuard comes into play because we at Zebra manufacture devices for a period of time. We announce an eventual end of sale and we continue to provide hardware service uh, after we announce an end of sale. Um, what LifeGuard comes into play is that it is our commitment to extend the security life by providing patches security updates for these operating systems, for these devices for a period of 24 months after a device goes end of sale. You won't find that in a consumer place. You won't find that anywhere else in market. Uh, we will continue to provide security patches for previous versions of an operating system while you evaluate what the new operating system is going to be able to do for you. Um, you know, we know that industries are not going to update an operating system just because a new one came out. They they have compliance requirements, they have uh, test and validation that needs to be done and so on. We will continue to provide security patches for those pre predecessor operating systems while you evaluate uh, the, the new operating system coming forward. And uh, we will do it in a predictable manner. So monthly or quarterly security updates uh, are going to be provided by us. You choose to deploy those at your discretion. The good news is that all of this capability is available uh, as part of a Zebra One Care maintenance agreement uh, that is offered through Strategic. And if you wanted to uh, extend the life cycle of those products beyond the typical 24 months that we will provide for this, we will allow you to purchase one-year extensions up to the serviceable life of the product overall.
So, you know, think about investment protection and think about more so point number three on that recommendation list of the Department of Homeland Security, that when things are no longer supported, you should consider getting new. We will continue to support these devices for the long haul. So at the end of the day, you know, always, percep always separate perception from fact. Android is a very secure environment. Uh, it is actually based on a secure edition of, of Linux. Um, and it has features uh, such as per user VPNs, address space layout randomization, and allows programs to execute in different places of memory, making it more difficult for attackers to, to, uh, um, you know, to, to, to get to. Uh, it's very secure and it, it's, it's fully compliant with a lot of requirements that are out there in industry. Uh, HIPAA for healthcare or PCI compliant in retail or, um, you know, uh, so uh, you know, if FIPS 140-2 in government, uh, the, the, the compliance is there uh, for these operating systems and it is indeed a secure environment. And again, uh, point of reference, a very good article in Computer World about, uh, uh, about the you know, we have to, again, uh, separate perception from fact when it comes to, uh, to security. So really, you know, we're at a point now where we, we have to accept that the world is moving past Windows Mobile and CE. We have to look at this as an opportunity to be able to improve productivity, enhance the user experience, and innovate uh, the way that we execute on our businesses going forward. Uh, the market overall, uh, again, not just Zebra, the direction is clear, it is Android. Uh, and we have a long uh, leading uh, set of experiences that we've built around this direction going forward, right? So I just wanted to, to end my session here with a, just a couple of things, you know, summary slides for th food for thought. Um, you know, let's think about changing in, in warehouse technology, keeping up with the demands of the growing e-commerce, uh, the e-commerce e e experience that's going to put additional demand on the way that we execute in the warehouse and the way we execute in logistics. Uh, we have to increase the speed and accuracy. We have to shorten training times. We can do that with the platforms that we have available today. Uh, we have to do that now because uh, our, our, our legacy platforms are going away. Uh, we have to start being able to position ourselves to capitalize on the, uh, on the improvements that we see. Uh, we don't want to, uh, you know, think that we're playing it safe because we're running an obscure environment. If we think about the vulnerabilities that are beyond the operating system, they have to be passed through the operating system. We can't, rest on a misconception that legacy windows is safe uh, because it's not uh, it's it we have to build platforms that overcome these uh, these 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 risks in the environment itself um, we have to think about moving towards a modern environment we don't want to risk uh, risk our our businesses based on devices that are eventually going to go away they're going to end support. Uh, they can't keep up with the new standards on Wi-Fi. It takes them. It takes us a long train, time to train our users. Uh, more susceptible to security and you know a challenge of parts discontinuation. Um, you know we want to make sure that we position our businesses, that we maintain a competitive edge, that we have a tight partnership, uh, that we can enhance the overall workflow of our customers or end users. Uh, you know, who are our customers at the end of the day uh, and uh, do so in, in, a, in a way that allows us to execute faster in a more secure environment, which gives us a better ability to be agile in the way that we deliver these applications going forward. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to Joe here and, uh, and, and help add some final thoughts. So Joe, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. That was great. Uh, a, a bunch of uh, awesome info there, and uh, we appreciate your uh, your partnership. So before I before I dive into our uh, our process or philosophy that strategic uh, systems takes on a day to day basis, just want to give you 
high level for those of you on the webinar that uh, may not be too familiar with strategic systems. So um, we are uh, a true end-to-end -end data collection solutions integrator. Uh, we've been in business for 19 years now. We are headquartered in Suwannee, Georgia, um, and we support customers all across the country from a, uh, a hardware, software, and services uh, a deployment uh, capability. And I'll get into each of those different departments as we go through our philosophy. But um, part of being a data collection solution integrator is, you know, for us, the way I kind of sum it up is we, you know, we need to uh, uh, put the right solution in front of our customers for the right use case uh, to, you know, ultimately to kind of kind of sum up what Kevin said, we need to be able to increase productivity and efficiency. Um, and there's a lot of options out there from a, from a hardware standpoint, but it's apparent, you know, just listening for the last, you know, 30 minutes to Kevin kind of go through your Zebra's philosophy that they have, you know, they have what what we need from a hardware standpoint to be able to provide and a, and a, and a support standpoint and industry knowledge standpoint to be able to provide you as our customer the appropriate solution to to help you with your your business wants and needs. So um, that's why we take the approach to uh, to align with Zebra from that aspect. We built our business around the symbol Motorola Zebra product line from a hardware standpoint, and we continue to evolve with them as they continue to you know come to market with new products and solutions. Um, uh, so on and so forth. So um, as Kevin mentioned, these conversations with uh, Android and the enterprise have been going on for several years. I mean, it dates back to, you know, uh, you know, Motorola Solutions, Zebra, having those conversations, you know, back in 2010. Uh, you know, Kevin and I were talking the other day, you know, we, you know, where there was road shows in 2013 to get out in front of customers to talk about you know, Android, you know, migration, the enterprise, and some people looked at, uh, looked at us a little crazy, but, um, uh, you know, this is a very exciting time for us. Um, Kevin you know, also mentioned, you know, there's good market adoption. I think he changed it to excellent market adoption, you know, after he said good, which, which is, which is, I think is spot on. I mean, it's exciting time for us that we're able to have a, a solid reason, a compelling event to really help our customers, um, you know, become more efficient, you know, do more, you know, Kevin mentioned, do more with their devices, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you know push to talk and workforce connect is a great example of how, you know, how we could possibly eliminate. Uh, eliminate some of their hardware costs by enabling more for uh, you know from a from a single use device and uh, and allow them to uh, to be more efficient not to have to you know wear you know multiple devices on their on their work belt per se. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ways that we can you know help you accomplish your goals. So I want to take you through uh, just for a few minutes you know strategic philosophy in doing so. So um, we we have a process that we take our customers through and it starts with you know, evaluating, you know, evaluating what their business wants and needs are. And then, and then again, putting the right, you know, what's that, what's the right solution uh, that we need to put them in from, you know, not just a hardware standpoint. I know, you know, we have mobile device selection, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in this order. You know, usually we start with, you know, what are the applications that we're using? What are the, you know, what are the different use cases, whether it be proof of delivery or warehouse management, inventory management, or, you know, from a retailer, whether, you know, price lookup on the store floor, Whatever it may be, we look at that and we say, what are your applications doing today? How can we support you from a, you know, one, an application development standpoint? So Strategic uh, Systems has an in-house software development team that can help, uh, you know, help with the migration along with utilizing Zebra's, uh, you know, Zebra's uh, service offerings as well. And then taking, taking it from there and saying, well, what, you know, what is that piece of hardware um, that makes sense? You know, Kevin mentioned, uh, you know, before that, you know, a lot of our customers were seeing using, you know, using a device and adding accessories to that device to perform different use cases. And, you know, I'll get into it a little bit later on specific customer use cases where we, we've actually taken a single device and, and spread it across their, you know, their cross stocks and distribution centers, so on and so forth. So choosing a device and then from there, Strategic has the ability, you know, I mentioned our services team, we have a professional services and technical services organization that supports our sales team where we could, we could take that device uh, and stage it so we can load your image um, onto the device, um, and we can uh, you know put any you know any documentation, instructions, videos, whatever we need to do on that device to you know help with training uh, per se, and then actually get that deployed uh, deployed out to you multiple facilities, single facilities, however you know however you want to slice it, um, and then from there we even have a not to get into too too much details, and you know the, the goal would be to hopefully uh, you know if we're not currently working with you today we can get into get into specifics of each of these service offerings, but we can actually manage your, you know, spare pool through our rapid equipment exchange uh, service offering and portal that we, you know, that our tech services team manages where we can, you know, manage your spare pool devices and uh, manage your RMA process for you to make it easier for your, you know, your teams to, 
you know, go out and do uh, do other duties and allow us to, to take the uh, take the brunt of that workload. Um, devices and services on here. You know, we have the, a lot of customers that are looking to move from a capex to an opex model, where they you know they pay a predictable monthly cost per device, and we wrap uh, you know the hardware, software, and services a complete solution into a bundled price. That uh, uh, that whether you know structured the way you would like it, whether it be a you know two, three, four, five year offering with a with a possible refresh built in uh, at some point in time, or you know, again, to get custom and creative to allow you to always stay on the cutting edge and, and not have to, uh, you know, to budget for that big, big time refresh, um, you know, as, as, as it comes up. And as these applications evolve, what I would say is customers are, are concerned that, you know, they are doing more with these devices and how you know, they, they may change at a more rapid pace than keeping these devices for, you know, for seven to 10 years. So that model actually has been proving, uh, proving successful for a lot of our, our clients out there. And then the last piece, the OS migration assistance, um, you know, I mentioned our, our software development team along with Zebra, you know, Zebra support as well. If you need help with uh, migrating your applications from, from Windows to Android, we absolutely have that service service offering to help you accomplish your, your wants, needs, and goals, whether it be, you know, working with you with a homegrown application or, or working with your third-party application provider uh, to, to accomplish your goals. Um, the last thing I'll end with before we get into some Q&A is that, um, you know, we, you know, strategic and Zebra, we're willing and able, you know, again, I, you know, there's probably a lot of people on this webinar that we are currently engaged with and involved in projects. And, you know, and, and, and you know, Kevin has some information in there that's not really Zebra strategic, you know, related, but more industry related, which is great. You know, it's just knowledge for all of us to understand what's going on in the marketplace. But, we, you know, when you are ready, you know, if we're not currently working with you, we'd love to understand your business wants and needs better. Um, you can reach us at, you know, sales at strategic system, SSTID.com, or if you currently have an account manager assigned to you, feel free to reach out to them directly, um, and we'll be happy to come in and, uh, and evaluate what you're looking to accomplish and, and uh, help you get there. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank, thanks, Joe and, uh, and Kevin for that. Uh, that information that's really helpful. We did have a couple of questions come in, and I think um, we we may have answered a, a few of them going through the the presentation. And um, if you want to just maybe touch on them just a, a little bit more, um, that's a uh, you know th that would be uh, appreciated. But I guess one of the questions was around the end of Windows Mobile support. Um, how how quickly are you seeing replace? You know, so I guess the the Department of Home Homeland Security had recommended that when the device model is no longer supported that they recommend you decommission the model is that is that what you're seeing people are doing um i guess the question was around you know are, are they not as you know they're they're not as secure but are people replacing them um as you know as quickly as as they become you know unsupported or what do you, what do you yeah. think no actually actually that's a good question and and you know i think the industry overall kind of suffers from um you know trying to hang on to any investment for as long as we possibly can um, other segments, um, you know, retail, uh, healthcare, uh, even uh, route accounting applications, they're moving towards this more modern environment quick. Um, warehouse, uh, in some logistics operations, they're slow to adopt. Uh, there has been a significant uptick uh, in the conversion to a more modern operating system, not necessarily because of the recommendations of Homeland Security, but more so because Microsoft is, you know, they're they're getting out of the mobile play. Um, you know, not to say that that Microsoft isn't viable within uh, logistic operations, just not in a, a mobile form factor. So it's kind of what we're seeing there. Okay, um, and then kind of, I guess this would be a good follow-up question then for you, Kevin, on this is, what is what does it take to port an existing application to Android? What is you know what's kind of the the range of complexity that you see um, in doing that? Yeah, so in in actually in in anticipation of a, a question like that because I get that asked all the time, um, you know, when we especially when we look at 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 warehouse, the majority of the applications still out there is is terminal emulation, um, and going to the Android platform even with terminal emulation is relatively easy to do. Uh, it, and it, we can do it in such a way that, that it's a, a quick switch 
um, basically providing like for like capability, uh, green screen and green screen. And then we can optimize that experience by adding, um, you know, in use keyboard uh, functionality, you know, like uh, instead of having to hunt for the F3 key to go to the next screen or to do an exit, we can just show them that on the, on the, on the device itself. And then, uh, furthermore, take that same application, no changes to the back end, and move that into something that is more, that appears to be more modern. Think of it like almost on device uh, screen where you're formatting without having to change any of the back end stuff. So the migration path is, 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 it's, it's there. Uh, it's a journey. Um, but, it, you know, it's something that can be started. Uh, very quickly, and and of course, with the services organization that you guys have, makes that uh, makes that journey all the much easier. Okay, that's that's great. Thanks for that, um, Joe. Um, this this might be a good question for you. Um, what experience does Strategic Systems have helping um, with these types of OS migrations? Yeah, so um, uh, you know we have I mentioned it before. You know we have been having these conversations for. Uh, for several years now, so we're excited to get a lot of these have, you know, we're either in the, uh, you know, beginning, middle, or end um, of these of these cycles for a lot of our customers. But I'll talk about one in particular because I think it's a good it's a good story. So we have a, one of our large retail customers um, who uh, in their warehouse was a, was a traditional, you know, they've had legacy Motorola Windows devices, about 5,000 of them for uh, for several years, um, and on the, on the store side, so just to kind of mention this because I think it'll all come together at the end, is they have they had iOS device for the past for the past five years that they were running their in-store applications on. Um, so they had a mixed population of of iOS and Windows. Um, and a few years back, we we went on the journey of you know what it would take to get them from uh, from you know this is specifically now speaking on on the warehouse side, you know getting them from. Uh, Windows, uh, you know, based solution to an Android. So we evaluated uh, several different solutions over the over the you know the time, and uh, we standardized. Uh, we we came to the conclusion that the TC uh, 5000 series devices, TC 50, 51 and 56, was the was the right solution for for multiple use cases, and they decided to standardize on the single platform and use it for multiple use cases. So they. Are currently using the device uh, for proof of delivery um, in the warehouse, um, with some accessories built in, uh, um, you know, some ring scanner attachments for for the trucks, and then some truck-mounted devices for the for the device to be used in the cars. Um, and then for the warehouse, they're using it for multiple you know, warehouse inventory management solutions. Some use cases uh, that they were using the 9000 series, they switched out and and uh, now added the trigger handle to the 51 uh, inside the four walls, and some of the uh, you know some of the use cases where they didn't need the trigger handle; they're just using it as a uh, as a as a inventory management uh, solution device that they were just using a standard uh, um, a standard MC55 for before. So, um, uh, with that said, you know it trickled over to different departments of the business. So now um, the 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 retail side was having issues with uh, with their iOS solution for several years, um, and they decided to to follow suit to their to their warehouse. Uh, and cross stock teams and and looked at the uh, the TC uh, 7x and 5x series and they did, they determined that the, the 51 was the right device and they have 10,000 units in their retail stores that they're in the process of of, uh, of you know of, of finalizing their application deployment over to, um, to Android um, along with the, uh, you know our support and deeper support to help them get there um, and they're in the process of rolling out you know those 10,000 devices over the next few months into their into their ecosystem. So, you know, the good story there is they have a common platform across all their lines of business that both Zebra and Strategic support uh, with our, you know, with our support, you know, services and capabilities. And, um, you know, we also manage their mobile, you know, their MDM solution, uh, which is SOTI, um, that our, our team has expertise on as well to, to help uh, to help that with the, the deployment of devices as well. So a good story there. Um, and again, a lot of discussions with, with various customers uh, alike, but that's just a good one because it kind of, Shows that you know once they once you get in with the right you know with the right solution it can it can spread and they can uh, you know do more with that single device. Okay, yeah, and the, the follow-up question to that was, um, how do you reduce the complexity of kind of integrating legacy equipment with the you know with these newer systems? And it sounds like you're saying kind of a staged approach to migration is kind of what what you guys have been helping your customers to implement. 
Yeah, I mean, I think if you if you start with you know you start with understanding the use case, what the applications are, you know, the functions they're providing, you know, what it's going to take to get the you know first first get the application over, which is you know which is the uh, the brains behind the whole solution, and then you know taking that piece of hardware, doing the testing, and then you know getting it rolled out in their in their specific time frame. And it takes a it takes all parties involved, right? It takes all the teams, in, internal, strategic, both you know you know soft development, technical services, sales, as well as zebras, you know uh, you know so, you know sales you know, technical services, product management, and so on and so forth. So putting everybody together, it's a powerful, uh, powerful combination. Okay. Well, that, that sounds good. It looks like that's our time uh, today, but I just wanted to thank, uh, thank you, Joe and Kevin, for hopping on the, the call today with us and kind of running, running through that information. And uh, for everyone on the call, uh, thank you for joining us on the, uh, the webinar today. Hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you all. Much appreciated.